Hey, I'm recreating a video that I've done before, which is the super simple, cheap way to create really good product photography. Uh, it's different from other things I've seen out there on the internet. Um, I think it's easier. I think it's more foolproof. Uh, the reason I'm the reason I'm doing it is I've created a blog, Blur.bz. Um, I review lenses. I talk about cameras, and I do things like this. Uh, but what I really want to do that some other people don't do is if I'm testing a lens then I'm, I'm going to include photos of that lens. I don't want to just sit on a video and talk about a lens and say it's great. I'm going to post um, photos with that lens so a blog seems like a good medium for that. Same as this, um, I will post the photos that end up being taken from this um, on that blog. So blur.bz, B-L-U-R dot B-Z or Z for my Irish friends. So I'm shooting today with a Nikon D7100, which is the lowest Nikon that I have here right now. Um, I'm shooting with a kit lens because just to kind of make this, you know, this is similar if you have a D5000 series, 3000 series, pretty much anything with a pop-up flash, then this will absolutely work for you. So this is, I'm using a kit lens just because that's a good comparison although usually when I'm shooting things like this I would be using that is a Nikon an older Nikon 60 millimeter macro micro as Nikon call it the, the f 2.8 D and that is way better than the newer G so if you have a Nikon 3000 series or 5000 series unfortunately you can't use this um, and that is one of my opinionated things about why you should not buy that camera buy those cameras. So here's what we're going to do. We've got a camera, we've got a kit lens, I'm tethered up to my laptop so that this is visual, and we have one flash, and we have something else that I'll show you in a second. Well, let's just look at this. So what I'm going to do, let's go, let me just make sure my settings are, I'm going to go to ISO, I'm ISO 200. I'm in program mode, so I'm telling the camera just do whatever you want to get a photo of that car. That was a pretty slow, slow shutter speed, as you can see. Yeah, that's pretty visible. It's not. It's not. It's not actually in focus, or it moved because it was such a slow, slow shutter speed. That's slightly better. It's not great. Um, it's because it's low light, it's using a big aperture, which means you might not be able to see, but I'm focused there. This is slightly out of focus, and this is slightly out of focus because my depth of field with that big aperture that the program mode is taking is taking a slice of focus through here. So we want a bigger aperture, which is what you do in product and macro photography. So let's just see what it does if I use the flash. I mean, it's not horrible. It's it's not. Well, it, it is horrible. It's it's crap. We can do a hell of a lot better than that. So that is program mode with the flash. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to do go full manual and do not be frightened by that because this is very straightforward. So you put your camera on M. ISO has to be manual too. If you have your I ISO in manual, the camera will try to compensate and raise your ISO way up. So you find that setting, go ISO, and this it's 200, 200, 100, 200. Maybe it can go down. 200 is fine. I'm going to change the shutter speed to, it doesn't really matter, like a 200th. Don't go faster than 200. And I'm going to change the aperture to F. 13 say and I'm going to shoot without the flash and what we're going to find is black so that's super important this is this is something that blew my mind the first time I read about it um, I'm a big fan of Matt Granger mattgranger.com that Nikon guy he has a course on light which is a really good place that I've seen this kind of concept of light and flash described and uh, it's got great tutorials on that but basically here's here's the theory when you see when you see a lot of product photography and modeling photography and you see that beautiful shot of the half-lit face that is taken in, 
That can be taken in broad daylight or a studio scenario. And here's why. We are in a situation right now where the camera is so shut down that pretty much all we're getting is black. So we have complete control, complete control over how we shape the light because only the light that we add is gonna count. Does that make sense? So right now it's black. If I add any light with flash or anything else, that is what is going to affect our shot. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. This is a Young Now 560. There's a Mark III, a Mark IV. This is a flash that is, I love. There are cheaper flashes. Last time I tried to do this, I used this Amazon $30 or something, but it kind of fails, it kind of doesn't work. Um, so I have a bunch of these. I'm gonna do another video about Young Now because I love them. I don't know how to say that, Young Now. Is that right? Young now. Who knows? These are awesome. Here's the mode I'm going to use it in. Usually I would use, put this on the camera, which can control the strength of this. And basically I put this on the camera. I have a few of these. This can control them all individually from where I am. I don't have to walk around a room, but I'm going to use it in a different mode. I am going to use it in a slave mode, which basically means when this flash senses any other flash, it'll fire. So what happened there was this flash fired, this flash saw it and also fired. So this photo is a combination of both of those flashes. Now we know that in, in normal setting, we're pretty much complete darkness. So this ring light I'm using here, this light I'm using does not affect the exposure at all. So, here's an important thing we have to do. We don't really want this flash impacting that photo. So we're gonna go into our menu. We're going to go to bracketing and flash and custom menus, custom settings menu. Bracketing and flash, we're gonna to go to flash control for built-in flash and change it from TTL, which means you take a photo, it sends up, sends up a tiny flash of light so quickly you don't see it, reads back what comes back and then sets the power accordingly. TTL is through the, through the lens. We're gonna set it to manual and we're going to go to the absolute weakest setting it can. For this camera, that is 128. That means, let me see. So that flash is affecting the picture a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So I'm even going to go to F 18 so that it doesn't it still does a tiny bit i can live with that um yeah you can see it's just tiny 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 amount so here's where the fun begins this flash is not strong enough to light this picture but it is strong enough to fire this flash boom so here's the point at which we start to have some fun I'm turning this flash that's too bright. The three things that impact the brightness of the shot are the power of the flash and the size of the aperture and the ISO. The shutter speed does not. So I am setting this down to 164th and I'm gonna try that again. It's not bad. As you can see, here we are in a pretty well lit area, but it's not seeing flash but you can see that the only light impacting this little car is the light that I'm adding with this flash so we have some creative possibilities now um, you can play around like that play around with light still not I mean fun and all and interesting and all but still not that nailed it product shot. So to summarize, we have a camera set in manual mode. I have ISO 200. I have the shutter speed at 1 200th of a second. As long as it's less than 1 250th, it doesn't matter. This creates a piece, this creates a blast of light that's thousandths, hundredths of, hundredth of a thousandth of a second. 
So as long as that shutter's open a little while, it doesn't matter. Um, it has to be open, it can't be open, like these cameras go up to maybe 4,000th of a second. You don't want to set it to that because it might, it might miss it. So about 200th. The aperture I have set right now is f18. f18 is a pretty small aperture. And the result of that is that the depth of field, the amount that is in focus, is wider. The bigger the hole, the, the shallower the slice that is in focus. So we've got a, we've got a small aperture. Well, that was good timing for my compressor to kick in. Um, so we have a... It's confusing. We have a small hole, which is a small aperture, which means a big F number, F18, which might be all this lens goes up to. We have the flash at the minimum setting. Just its only purpose is to set this flash off. So we have a very, still a very unidirectional high shadow kind of stylized look here. It's not what we want for a product. Photograph. So here's what we are going to do. Budget wise, I think these are about $55, $60 on, on um, Amazon. Um, this is, I like shiny. This is a, this is from the scrap pile at Ikea. It's a shelf. So I have a whole stash of cards and papers and things. Here is where we're going to spend a little bit more money. This is a light tent, which you'll see if you look at videos about this, if you look at videos about um, product photography, you'll quite often see people use these with either multiple flashes or putting a light either side. What I'm going to show you is much easier and much better in terms of in terms of results. I'm going to take a piece of card and I'm going to just put it in a little kind of an arc there. I'm going to put my shiny piece of wood back in. Let's see, yeah, you'll be able to see that. Put the card there again. Here's the magic. I am going to put this flash out of the shot, obviously, but inside here on a stand pointing up. I think I'm even going to do this. There's a little refractor in here. So by pulling that out, I'm making the light splay or bounce around more. And here's why I'm doing this. The more light sources you have on a subject, the more evenly it's going to be lit. In this case, we're using this light tent, which is typically used to shoot through. We're shooting inside it because that light is going to bounce off absolutely everything here and act as a single point of light. Now we're not pointing it directly at the car anymore, so it might be it needs to be a little bit stronger. Yep needs more power so I'm adjusting it I'm going this is 1 16th <laughs> 1 8th that is pretty darn good now these spots are I don't know what those spots are I think I need to clean my sensor don't worry about those spots so, clearly, that is night and day difference. Look, the, the, the shadow under the car is super soft. Um, the lighting of the car itself is super even. There's reflections. I see the flash in there, so let's try another position. That is... I'd be super happy to put that product shot on eBay. 
or to use it as a product shot on a website. Super happy. And that's all we did was use this. Now, you could do this. You could get a table and pin a white sheet under the table and let it drape down the sides and the back. It's, it's all just about having something that bounces this light off. Um, let's try something else. Uh, yeah, let's do something else. I like minions. That is a really good product shot. We can put it in a bit deeper and get more of a shadow. Can you still see that? Yep. That shadow's nice. If I put the flash slightly behind it, I'm going to get a more marked shadow at the front there. A little bit more like we have this highlight at the front and more of a face shadow. I could set it to bounce off the back. That's probably going to be more of a backlit. <laughs> yeah, so that is, that's using, there's so much white hitting that card, light hitting that card at the back. It's completely blowing it out. Pure white. And we have that heavier shadow. But, but because this light's hitting that card off all these walls, the front is still nicely lit. If we direct flash it, it's just going to not be too harsh. So, I mean, here's the crazy thing. As long as you move this around, there is not much you can do to mess this up. It just works. Now, you can do things like shoot through. If you shoot through direct, I'm going to have to let make it less, yeah, I mean, we're back to that original, we're back to that kind of original with no tent. The absolute secret is we're bouncing light around this tent and it just makes this beautiful, even light. I'm going to go up a little bit more. That's a quarter power. To me, that is pretty much, pretty much perfect. Um... Even hard things to shoot, like this. It's even white. Personally, I like it a little bit behind. That's nice. That's nice. That's even nicer, actually, for a white. Do a black base instead of a white base. Something black. I mean, that's a really good product photo. We're using a kit lens. This is a an 18 to 70 non VR. Um, so it's an older kit lens from something before VR. VR. I like it more than the seven, the eighteen by to fifty-five. I don't. My daughter uses this um, on her D fifty three hundred sometimes. Um, so let's recap. If we don't have a flash on, there's nothing going on here that impacts. Nothing going on that impacts this photograph because we're ISO one hundred. One two hundredth of a second and f18 in full manual mode. The pop-up flash is turned down in power to its minimum so that it barely impacts the light. But it fires the flash that bounces off the inside of the tent and creates a super even beautiful Fall off a log, easy, simple product shot. I would absolutely post that to the website. So, that's it. Hope that's useful. Bye.